Hello everybody, welcome to another Windows PowerShell uh, video and today we're going to be talking about two things. The first one that we're going to focus on is we're going to learn how the commandlets uh, are structured. So why they're structured the way they are, um, how to identify uh, parameters that you can use with those commandlets. Then we're going to talk about the tab completion, which is a very useful feature. And we're also going to talk about the uh, about files that exist for you. The first thing that we're going to cover is the structure of the PowerShell commandlets. One thing that you need to know is all of the commandlets uh, are built in the verb noun notation. Now, why is that? Well, just to make it easier for all of us who are using Windows PowerShell. The verb portion will specify what the commandlet does, and the noun will specify on which type of resource that, uh, c that uh, action can be performed. Now, the common verbs are get, set, new, add, and remove. They're pretty easy to memorize. So get will retrieve a resource for you, such as a file or a user. The set will change whatever data is associated with that file or a user. And new will create a new file or a new user. Add will gonna just gonna add some data or a resource to a um, to something that already exists and remove will delete whatever you want to delete from uh, your multiple resources. Now, as I said before, the noun will specify um, what type of action will be performed on which type of object. So either on resource or an object, uh, that's what your noun will specify, which object or resource we will be performing an action on. Now, um, there's such thing as uh, prefixes that exist when it comes to nouns and those prefixes will just group related nouns into certain families now for example if you want to use something and do something on an active uh, directory you will have uh, a noun that starts with ad which stands for active directory such as ad user ad group or ad computer then there's also Microsoft SharePoint server. They begin with SP, stands for SharePoint. And Microsoft Azure will start with AZ, which stands for Azure. There's also such thing as parameters. Parameters will spe uh, specifically modify how your commandlet uh, acts, how it performs. So you can just be more specific with what you need to do by using those parameters. You can either specify no parameters, one parameter, or many parameters for a certain commandlet. One thing that you need to know is the format of how to use it and uh, the types of parameters. Now, the format is every parameter will begin with a dash. So if you see a dash in front of something in Windows PowerShell, that is a parameter. Now, there's also two types of parameters. One is optional and the second one is required. When it comes to optional parameters, well, they are optional. You don't have to put them in. You can uh, put them in if you want to, if that's something that you want to do, but they're not required. Now, the required parameters, um, they are <laughs> well required. You have to put them. If uh, you run a commandlet with a required parameter that, uh, and you not you do not specify that parameter. Your PowerShell will throw a prompt at you. It's going to display something that will tell you that you have to provide a value for a certain parameter that is a required parameter. In this case, in this example, we want to get an item from somewhere, but if you do not specify where that item has to be coming from your PowerShell will throw this message at you right here and it's going to tell you specify the path. Basically, it's just telling you where do you want that item to, uh, where do you want to retrieve that item from? So it's just going to tell you that you need to specify the path where that item is located. There's also such thing as switches. Switches are also parameters, but they are a special case. They are parameters that will only accept a Boolean value of true or false. Uh, recall your uh, coding classes. Boolean is the data type that can only accept true or false. Now, they are different from an actual Boolean parameters that exist because if you type that switch, it will automatically assume that that switch is set to true. When it comes to Boolean parameters, you can set them either to true or false, but with switches, they are only set to true if you type them. For example, if you use the recurse switch, 
uh, you will, um, if you use it with the command let get child item, you will get uh, all of the items that exist within the C directory or the C drive if you run this command right here. So what that means is you will not only get the items that exist within the C directory, you will also get the items that exist within the C subdirectory. So basically, if you have any folders that are inside of your C directory, uh, just to make it simple for you guys, those will also be displayed, everything that is inside of those folders. Now, if you don't use the recurse switch, you will only get the names of those folders, but not the contents of what is inside of those folders. Now, the tab completion. That's probably one of the most useful features when it comes to PowerShell. If you are not sure which commandlet you want to use, or which noun you want to use with a certain verb, or which parameters you want to use with a certain commandlet, you can use the tab feature. All that you need to do is type either a verb or a full commandlet, and you just need to press tab key on your keyboard multiple times to see which uh, either commandlets or which uh, parameters are available to you to be used with those words. So for example, if you type get, just the word get, and you put a dash and you type tab multiple times, it will show you all of the options that you can use with get as the beginning of your commandlet. The same uh, thing works for parameters. You can type, for in this example, you can type get ad, and then if you put a dash, you can use uh, and see all of the parameters that are available to be used with the get ad, um, get ad uh, commandlet. Now, the about files content is also a very useful feature that exists within PowerShell. Uh, if you want to know more about just the global techniques when it comes to PowerShell and global features, uh, you can use the get help about command. Now, this will just give you the rundown of how to use um, simple uh, features of the PowerShell, how to learn more about certain topics. You just need to type get help put about if you put a star it will give you all of the topics that are available for reading and if you want to be more specific you can just type a specific um, topic name instead of topic name you will put the actual topic name obviously uh, in an example right here get help about common parameters so if you want to learn more about the common parameters this is what you would type now let's look at this knowledge check right here. You can pause this video if you want to stop and answer these questions for yourself, but we're gonna carry on. And the first question is, which of these option is the most common structure that PowerShell command lets use? Well, we've just covered it, is the verb noun format. Which key can you use to complete or suggest parameters for a PowerShell command? That's again, we've just covered it. This is the tab key. If you press tab, it's going to show you all of the available options for you to use. Okay, you can also pause to read these answers if you uh, guess them incorrectly. And the summary of this lesson. So the key takeaways. The first one is the structure of a commandlet is a verb noun format, something that you need to memorize. Verb noun. Now, uh, parameters, again, one thing to memorize, parameters starts with a dash. One thing that you need to know, they start with a dash. And a tab completion feature. Tab completion feature, you just press tab, it's going to show you all of the available options when it comes to your commandlets or your parameters. And the about help, the about help are just files that contain documentation, that contain um, information about the general idea of PowerShell, the scripting language, operators, parameters, and other details. So just the general idea of how those things works. Now, the second part of this video, we're going to focus on uh, how to use those commands. We're gonna, we're, I'm going to show you an example of how to use them. And we're also going to talk about what specifically is command uh, returning to us and how we can customize that return. The first thing that we're going to talk about is the get help. The get help commandlet is just going to help you learn more about a command. Pretty simple. If you don't know what a command does, you just need to put get help and it's going to show you all of the information about that command. Now, 
um, you will get a lot of information when you type that. These are the common sections that will exist. The name, syntax, aliases, remarks, and parameters. There's another one which is a synopsis. Synopsis is just a small um, sentence that will briefly describe what the command does. Now, the name is going to provide the name of the command. Syntax is going to show you how to call that command, how to use it with flags, and sometimes if there are any parameters, it's going to show you how to use those parameters. Aliases is going to just list any other names that this command has, so any names that you can type, uh, which will perform the same action for you. Remarks uh, is just going to tell you how to get some more information about the command, and parameters is going to describe details about how to use certain parameters with that command. You can also filter that help response by using these flags, full detailed examples, online and parameter. The only useful ones is the full is going to describe a whole um, help page. So if you want to search for everything, you will put full. Examples will return only the examples of how to use that command. Uh, with real case scenarios. Online is going to open a web page for that command. So in your browser, it's gonna, just going to open a help page and parameter. You need to specify which parameter uh, you want to learn about. And then it's just going to um, show you that specific parameters properties. Now let's put it to the test, everything that we have just talked about. So let's run a get help command on the get file hash to learn more about the command led called get file hash. So all you need to do put get help dash name get file hash. So if we run this, it's going to show us this big amount of text about our command. So as you can see the name, synopsis, syntax, how you can use it, description, more thorough description than just the synopsis of what this program does, what's its purpose, stuff like that. Uh, related links, if you want to learn more about this, you can click on this link. And remarks, uh, just a couple of notes about this commands if you want to learn more information. Since this is a big command to type, get help name, get file hash, you can use an alias, which is just help. Help get file hash. It will give us the same example. However, it will also give us the examples of how to use it. And it's going to paginate the output for us, which is pretty cool. It's going to separate all of the information into pages. So this is the difference of using the get help and just the help command. The help will separate this information into pages for us. If we wanted to find out just how to use this command, and we don't want anything else, we can use a flag, which is called examples. If we use this, we're just going to get examples of how to use this command and nothing else. As you can see, compute the hash value for a file, compute the hash value for an ISO file, compute, compute the hash value of a stream, and so on and so on. Now, every single command led that you run will return some sort of object for you. Now, if you want to learn more about what is actually being returned to you and how you can modify what is being returned to you, we will use the get member uh, command led. Now, command led that is called get member, it needs to be piped on top of the command. All that you need to know is when you see piped, that just means you need to put this sign right here, this um, character. So this will specify that you are piping the result uh, into. And what that means, you're just going to filter the output, basically. You're going to filter the output as you're uh, filtering something through a pipe. Let's try to use it. So if we want to know which processes are being uh, ran on our machine, we would use the get process command led. Now, the get process will show us all of the processes that are currently running on uh, our machine and to use the get member if we want to know uh, what is the type of these processes and what type of object is being returned to us when we use commands on these processes we will use the get member command let's try to run that command so 
If we want to learn more, for example, about our first one, .net, we just have to specify get process, name, and in uh, quotation marks, we have to specify which process we want to learn more about. After that, we put our pipe, get, member. Now, what we are presented with is all of these uh, rows, which consists of name, member type, and definition. But for now, we're just going to focus on the first um, sentence that we are presented with, which is, which is type name system.diagnostics.process. So now we know that our .NET process is actually a system diagnostics process. So we found out which type, specific type of the process this .NET process is. Now, if we want to learn which uh, commandlets we can also use on this process outside of just our um, get process uh, command. So if we want to learn more about which commandlets we can use with this process.net, all that we need to do is just type get command, then specify which parameter type we're talking about, parameter type, and we are specifying that we are talking about a process type of um, command. Since right here we see process, so we are specifying that we want to know which command list we can run on this process. Now it takes a little bit to start running. And after some type, we get after some time we get this table right here, which shows us which command lets we can use on our process of .NET, which are debug process, enter ps host process, get process, stop process, and wait process. So we can use all of these. And if you want to learn more about these commands and what they mean, all that you need to do is just use get help. Again, let's try to do that. Help debug process, the first one. And if we run that, it's going to tell us what it does. So this process will de debug one or more processes that are running on your computer. Here's the knowledge check again. Uh, pause this video if you want to answer these for yourself. But the first one is using the help system, what command or function helps you paginate the response? Now the answer to that will be the help command because remember this, this one uh, is also correct, but it's not gonna paginate the response for you. Now the which statement will most definitely find the return type from a command. That would be the get member pipe uh, commandlet. Let's check our answers. They're correct. And let's move on to the summary. So we got familiar with the get member pipe, which will show us which type of a process we are working with or which type of uh, an object we are working with. And we also utilized the get help command and we learned how to uh, find more help about certain commands that we want to learn about. Now, this is it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions and I will see you in the next video.